CS183 Lecture 11, how to fail forward doing your own selling and promoting your own thing. So Lecture 5 and Lecture 11 are the only two lectures where you will be selling something that you did on your own. The other lectures in lectures 1 through 20, you're selling something that somebody else coded. The reason for that is we want to try to remove the emotional pain from attempting to try to sell something. And that's what failing forward is about. This is a standalone lecture, sure, but it's great if you coincide it with at least lecture five and lecture seven. But this is definitely standalone where you wanna fail forward using uh, this lecture. Almost seven years ago to the date, I met a person named Steve Blank, Professor Blank. And on page 99 of his book, I pre-read his book before I went to a dinner where I met him before I took Engineering 145, before I took Engineering 245. Page 99 of his book states this, Four Steps to the Epiphany, you should get it. The first time that a founder attempts to sell something is typically for their own startup. Let me repeat that. The, page 99, the first time someone attempts to sell something is for their own startup. That's where Startup Death Spiral is on page 128. Uh, I know that's creepy, but Startup Death Spiral is real, page 128. It's bit.ly, bit.ly, if you don't want to buy the book yet, bit.ly slash sblank710. Sam Altman has a blog post that implores you from his playbook to get good at asking people to use your products, get good at asking for money. That's it, just one sentence. I've got a basil plant, so bugs. Try to sell something before you sell your own thing. Try to sell something before you sell your own thing. So the lecture 11, CS183S, is all about failing forward, which is the sequence, sequence of videos uh, that I'm going to be uh, pre-rolling. Failing forward with something that we are selling, that we coded, uh, is genius because it gets us to try and go with a process uh, where failure is imminent but if you're failing forward you feel a lot more motivated to get up and going and try and one of the things that we're going to try to do is we're going to actually try to launch our product in the real world we're going to actually uh, launch our product by doing hand-to-hand -hand sales where we're gonna be calling people on the telephone. So these are all things that we're gonna try in the real world, where we're not gonna just be hiding behind a computer screen. Like acid-base titration, where you drive the entire system to base and then handle for the conditions there, that's what we're gonna be doing uh, and what you potentially did during lecture seven, which is you're gonna not badger the person to buy something, you're gonna beaver the person to buy something. The reason I use beaver is because it's a mascot for a school back east. And it's awesome because the process of building a dam via beaver is persistence, it's methodical, it's very engineering oriented. And that's what we as people who are trying to pop our cherry, pop our sales cherry, we can realize that a lot of these things, a beaver is already done. So when you're talking about acid-based titration, it's the process of trying to deal with the fact that you're a hustler. Badgering versus persistence, the ratios. So lecture seven talks about ratios of failing forward, but it doesn't call it by name. But it's a ratio of attempts that you make to try to sell something versus the reciprocity of the buyer or the prospect in messaging you back or their interest level. So there's that ratio of messaging in, messaging out, messaging return. There's a uh, ratio of uh, interest in your startup versus your interest in your own startup versus other people's interest in your own startup. So you're constantly looking at these ratios. And what you're doing with Failing Forward is you're trying to hack the ratios because right now, kind of people don't care. Failing Forward, the best thing that do is to set aside your immediate need to sell something. That's by letting the prospect know, I do not need to sell you today, tomorrow, or this week. So setting aside your need to sell something, setting aside your need to make a short-term quota 
or a short-term financial goal where you set aside your own needs and then now you're able to explore the mentorship and trying to not badger them into buying something but to beaver them into buying something where you're collecting little uh, pieces of lumber and chewing them off and putting pieces here and there to build up your little dam. Uh, One-way letter of intent, internal escrow, uh, doing real-world launch events uh, where we launch our product, we grand open our product, we debut our product, we uh, premiere our product, where it isn't just one orgasmic, climaxing launch party where you hope and you put all your eggs in one basket, you're literally failing forward with every little micro attempt uh, by doing real world sales, by doing things that don't scale but have momentum. Do DTTDS BHM, DTTDS BHM, doing things that don't scale but have momentum. Just recording on an 11 minute party photos helps you plod forward and start and not get demoralized when you spend 50 grand. You're just spending 200 bucks. Real world feedback, real world interaction. That's what you're trying to plod forward and do. Um, and that's why selling and doing, promoting and selling other people's thing gets you emotionally detached so that way we, when we sell our own thing in the real world, uh, we're on it and we're not just taking it personally when we don't get a certain sale or a certain positive result. But that's what lectures five and 11 are just selling our own thing where hopefully you've been able to practice selling other people's stuff. If two people come to your premiere party or your grand opening party or your debut party, that's a success. You don't need to have 15,000. You don't need to have 100% of your users just come from your launch party at some conference. That'd be great if they were to, but you wanna pre-roll, pre-promote, and fail forward with little of it. That's what EUTWM PPM implores you to do. Engineer up a tidal wave of momentum, perpetual promotion machine. Easy for me to say, right? So EUTWM PPM gets you to, to roll forward and to do small things. Having your event just getting archived on Eventbrite dovetails in with lecture five and lecture four with giving people one throat to choke. Meaning if you've done an event and you've been on Eventbrite and people when they search your random company, because this is the first time they've ever heard of your startup, they're gonna Google and they're gonna find a real world event on Eventbrite. And so that causes people to say, at least it's not vaporware. Because remember, there's other advice that goes into, oh, sell something first and then code it. Yikes, that's called vaporware. We wanna sell something that exists that other people coded that's real and we provide the customer service. So that's part of what we are trying to do here during this lecture. Party like it's 2016. So back when I taught engineering 145, technology entrepreneurship, ENGR145, hashtag ENGR145, I flippantly said, if it doesn't get recorded in the Wall Street Journal, did your event really happen? It's flippant because the model of EUTWM PPM along with failing forward uh, most definitely makes you special because you're a CS major who codes, highly likely to get in the Wall Street Journal. Plus, I kind of know a lot of people. Do it, report it, report what you're doing on social. And that's what helps and that's why pictures work. Thus, BHM works. Thus, but has momentum is real. So do things that don't scale, kind of demoralizing because why don't, why when 63,030 people, write that number down, 63,030 people took CS183 B as in boy, why do only 20 people set the bell curve? Why don't all people do well? It's because people don't think do things that don't people don't do things that don't scale. So do things that don't scale, but have momentum. So EUTWM PPM is the BHM portion of it. So write these down: DTTDS BHM, and then also write down EUTWM PPM, which is part of BHM. Photos matter. This is how most people upload photos. They upload photo number 112. I say 
properly title and tag the photo to be your random startup. So let's say two people came to your rinky dink event that you listed on Eventbrite. It sounds like a failure, right? Now, most of the time, if you run the EU TWM PPM playbook correctly, a few dozen people come to your event that you paid less than 50 bucks for. I know, lots of butt has momentum. So a few photos on a two person event is actually a method to fail forward because you're documenting, you're showing up, and even though it was a loser event that nobody came, it still builds momentum. So in 2009 it was, if it didn't happen in Wall Street Journal, it didn't get reported, I'm going to put myself out there that if you do a couple of these things, I will actually help you get into the Wall Street Journal. I know it's 2016 and I know that this is back in 2009, but I'm going to put myself out there that if you execute a few of these things, I will help you. Your homework, should you choose to accept it, is to close them at least on a cell phone number. So you're going to try to make a sale for your own startup or some startup that you're promoting that you didn't code for, but let's say it's your own thing. Close them, close the media, close a VC, close a, a potential prospect on just their cell phone number. You don't have to close for a $30,000 sale, which is actually entirely possible and relatively easy, but just close them on one little thing, their cell phone number, and then report back to me how that process went and what you learned. Raising venture, but raising revenue, it has the one doc. I know this because I begged them after CS183 B's and Boy ended to give the sales docs and it took them weeks and weeks and weeks. Now, what this shows is getting the first initial sale is super difficult. So what's gonna be previewed in lectures, uh, lecture number 12 is exactly which uh, 10 sales documents to use in attempting to get your first sale. Now, remember lectures five and 11 are selling your own thing. Lecture 12 is selling somebody else's thing. But even when you're selling somebody else's thing, you can practice using some of these legal docs to help you fail forward when they say, oh, we don't want to enter an illegal contract. Then you're like, oh, this is my countermeasure. Cool, right?